Good morning, America, and everybody worldwide. Welcome back to Unplugged and Uncut, the new source for sports, news, and entertainment. You're back kicking it with your boy, Unique. And today, we're about to get into Ja Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies and why they are contenders. That's right, we're going to go through their squad, check them out, and I'm going to let you know why these guys are contenders now and into the future. But before we get started, if you have not taken the time to hit that subscribe button, make sure you do. We will be giving away that PlayStation 5 with the game of your choice once we hit 100,000 subscribers. That is right. All you got to do to be entered to win is be a subscriber and drop comments in the comment section. But without further ado, let's get into one of the most exciting young players in his team, John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies. Currently sitting at third in the Western Conference. These bad boys are contenders now and into the future. That is right. So let's look at their squad real quickly. John Morant, the young explosive point guard is having an outstanding MVP type season. I mean, this man is a great leader. He leads by example. Ja isn't the biggest guy, but he dominates the paint like a young Tony Parker. That's right. When Tony Parker was leading the league multiple years with points in the paint as a point guard, that is what the homie Ja Moran is doing it. Now, they do it differently. Tony Parker was really quick. Um, they both are really quick, but Parker wasn't smashing on people like Ja Moran. Ja Moran would jump over you, through you. 360 oh my that kid is explosive but the comparison is there the ability to dominate the paint as a guard is something that teams would love to have it's like when you have ai just get into the rack at will Allen iverson was a monster and just got to the rack at will but let's look at john morant's averages because the man is averaging a ridiculous 26.4 points a game 5.9 rebounds, might as well call that 6 rebounds. 6.9 assists, we'll call that 7 assists. With the outrageous PER, his PER is top 10. It's 6th in the league at 25.7. My bad, 25.07. That is outrageous and just off the charts for a point guard who has the ball in his hands most of the time. That is right, John Morant is a beast and is a great leader to have going forward for the Memphis Grizzlies. But you can't just have one great player. You got to have multiple. And that's where the co-star comes in, Jaron Jackson Jr. That is right. He is an excellent co-star when he's healthy. He is a two-way player, loves the block shots, is going to play defense. He's a three-level scoring big. Take you outside, inside, down low, off the dribble. The man plays defense, the man plays offense, and is a perfect co-star for Ja Morant. I can't say enough about Triple J. In fact, the Memphis Grizzlies might have been a little more scary last year and years prior had Jaron Jackson not had a couple of injuries. That's his only real concern and really the concern for any player in the NBA. Or NFL, you got to worry about injuries. Um, the NBA is not as bad as the NFL because there's not as many collisions, but you're putting a lot of torque and pressure on your body, your joints, your knees, and your ankles. So that's what I worry about with Jaron Jackson Jr. Besides that, the man is a problem. And speaking of problems, you got to have an enforcer. That's right. The man, the human force of nature himself, Stephen Adams, six foot eleven, two hundred and sixty-five pounds. Ooh, the defensive anchor for the Memphis Grizzlies, returning them to that grit and grind. That uh, just get them. Now he only puts up about seven points a game at six point six, but he's bringing you nine point five rebounds. He has a PER of 17.05, which is really good for a big. And he also brings you 3.1 assists. Now, this is just your defensive-minded big who's also throwing out some dishes, getting you some nice assists, catching players, cutting to the basket. Steven Adams is a monster in the paint. And that's the type of person you want when you're going to have to go up against some of these other bigs that can really ball, like... 
uh, Joel Embiid, the Joker, Anthony Davis. You want to have Steven Adams in there, somebody big and strong that can hold his own. And I'm not saying he's going to be able to shut them players down, but you don't shut down Anthony Davis. You just try to contain him. All right. So next, we got Dylan Brooks. Now, Dylan Brooks is out with the ankle injury, guys, but he is coming back. And when he comes back, whoo, this man brings 18.4 points a game, 3.3 rebounds, 2.7 assists with a PER of 16.16, which is okay, not bad. Um, but Brooks is also a good wing defender. And he's going to hold his own and provide help defense once he comes back. That's right. You got a lockdown defender next to John Morant, Jaron Jackson, Steven Adams. These boys play offense and defense. That's why I really like this Memphis team. Speaking of playing offense and defense, that brings us to our next player, which is Desmond Bain. Man. <laughs> the strong guard out of TCU. Averaging 17.8 points a game, 4.5 rebounds, 2.4 assists, with a PER at 17.24. This man plays hard on both sides of the court. He's not taking no from nobody. The man is strong. <laughs> Desmond Bain is a beast. Watch out. You got players, as you see when we're going through Memphis, it's something that's stacking up. These boys try hard they're tough-minded and they got the will to win they got a bunch of winners over here brandon clark that's right the athletic active freak that's right jumps out the gym plays both sides of the ball get you 9.9 .9, call it 10 points a game 5.2 rebounds 1.4 assist with a per that is through the roof at 24.92 Get off the gas. The man Brandon Clark can ball, y'all. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> now, those are just a few of the pieces that Memphis got. So we're going to jump into a, the next tier for Memphis to me, which is their strong bench. Now, of course, we listed six players, but of course, Dylan Brooks is hurt right now. And then Brandon Clark, you got to mention him on his own. He's a monster. <laughs> He's still a youngster. Um, he's a little older than some of the other youngsters, but he's young to the NBA, and he could fly. All right, so let's look at the others because there are quite a few. Kyle Anderson, the point forward, slow-mo, plays solid defense. A good player to bring off your bench. DeAnthony Melton, a combo guard that can get buckets. That's right. Tyus Jones is the perfect backup point guard straight out of Duke, baby. That's right. The man can get buckets. He's going to facilitate the offense. He's a three-level scorer. Anybody that can get to the rim, hit from deep, and hit in the mid-range, those are the type of players you want on your team because they can get buckets at any time. Zaire Williams might be the best on this list. Man, he's a six-foot-nine guard, y'all. Six foot nine guard that can fly. He's a rookie with a ton of potential. And then you got Jared Culver, another big six six guard with good potential. He was the sixth pick in the 2019 draft straight out of Texas Tech. Don't sleep on Jared Culver. He's had a, um, a couple injuries and a slow time adjusting to the NBA. But the frame, the body is there, the work ethic, and the talent is there. This Memphis team, as you can tell, guys, they got players they can use to upgrade if they want to trade, but I would not make any trades. I would keep doing what they're doing. They drafted well. They brought in players that fit their system, and these guys are ready to, to contend right now. I'm not saying that they're better than Golden State or that they're better than Phoenix. I'm just saying those two top teams better watch out. Memphis is not coming to play. And they remind me of a young OKC Thunder when they just had <laughs> ridiculous amount of talent everywhere. It was like, good Lord, how you gonna have KD, James Harden, Westbrook, <laughs> all on the same team? <laughs> It'll block us. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, them boys was deep back then. And this young John, uh, John Morant's young Grizzlies, these guys are deep, man. Jaron Jackson Jr. is a future all-star. D 
Dylan Brooks is putting up 18 points a game. You can't deny that. That's per game. Desmond Bain, 17.8 points a game. You can't deny that. Their backups, the Zaire Williams and Jared Culver, the future. I mean, they got the now and the future all on one team. What more could you ask for if you're a Memphis Grizzly fan? Um, I'm a Spur fan, but I am very impressed with what the Memphis Grizzlies have done, what they're doing, the way they're constructing their roster, and Ja Morant. Ooh, every time I can watch this man play, I am trying to watch Ja Morant play. If you ain't trying to watch Ja Morant play, you're not trying to watch exciting basketball. These dudes are just off the charts and fun to watch. But guys, that's what I wanted to get into today, the Memphis Grizzlies and look at their roster and, and tell you guys why I think they're a contender now and into the future. Because they got the young talent that is ready right now to compete and they got the even younger talent that is ready to push them into the future. How you do that? That's like some go to state warriors. Man, that's right. That's like, I was gonna say the S man, but I hit it to myself, I caught it. Out it, y'all. That's like some Golden State Warrior type stuff, man. Think about it. They got Steph, Clay, Draymond. Now they got Kaminga, Moody, and Wiseman. <laughs> They're set for the future and it's set for the now. And yeah, that's what Memphis did, but at a younger level. That's highly impressive, guys. I'm gonna check the comments and see what everybody thinks on this one. Because if you're not feeling the Memphis Grizzlies, I'm not sure what you've been watching. These boys have been breaking it. Uh, but everybody, I hope you have a blessed day because your boy out. Peace.